Hi everybody, guess we'll get started here. So I think you're all very familiar with something like this here. We're going to be moving on to this idea of what is known as analytic geometry. Now, analytic geometry is a really fancy term for geometry with a bunch of algebra in it and a coordinate plane. And I think you're all very familiar with this concept of the coordinate plane here. So I'm just going to spend a few minutes in this video here to just sort of uh, make sure that we're all understanding what's going on here. So I think you can see with the coordinate plane here, you're going to have a bunch of things. You're going to have your origin here, which is going to be the center, sort of the center of our uh, you know, infinite two-dimensional surface here. And you're going to note we have axes here, two number lines, you know, uh, one axis here, one axis here that represent a uh, different way uh, that represent how far you are in a specific direction. So for instance, with X, you have the X, uh, the X direction left, right, Y, you have the up, down direction here. And note that every point in the corner plane is, can be, you know, represented by a, a, a dot, but also represented by a specific set of numbers here. So for instance, if we look at uh, uh, point B here, we can see that it's five units to the right of the origin and one uh, below the origin here. So we can give B the coordinate here, five comma negative one here. So we're gonna assign, so the idea behind a coordinate is that it's essentially we're assigning enough, we're assigning information to this point so that we can unambiguously find the point here. This five negative one means it's gonna be five to the right and one down here. Uh, if you look at old textbooks, Books here, um, some very old books from probably the time of your parents or grandparents here, you may find the terms here, you may find this term abscissa, oh, sorry, I spelled that wrong. You may find that abscissa here is used for this, and you may also find the term ordinate. Now, these are really antiquated terms here. But essentially all this is is just saying abscissa is just a fancy term for the x coordinate and the ordinate is just a fancy term for the y coordinate here. That's really all it is. Now you can also see that this coordinate plane is divided into four quadrants here. Quadrants based on sort of the, the sign of each of the uh, the coordinates x and y here. So for instance in this case here we, as you recall, quadrant one is the top right corner here and we have two positive values here. You have quadrant two in the top left here where the neg where you have a negative x coordinate and a y positive y coordinate here. In quadrant three on the bottom left here, you have two negative coordinates. And then in quadrant four over here, you have one positive, in this case x is positive here, and you have a negative y coordinate here. So basically the two axes sort of divide this grid into four quadrants here. Also note that we mean positive and negative here, so that actually eliminates the axes here. The axes just act as boundaries. So the points on the axes as well as the origin actually don't belong in any quadrants at all. So in this case here, we have something like this. Now, note that this is known as the rectangular system or the Cartesian coordinate system. This is by far the more, most common system because I get the, because this is the kind of thing that uh, left, right, up, down, those are the easiest ways to think of things. There are other coordinate systems out there and you'll learn about them as you go further on. In particular, the other major coordinate system in two dimensions is something known as the polar system where instead of giving an abscissa and an ordinate, instead of giving you know something like this here, two things where there's left, right, and up, down, they give you some Something else here, something, so for example, something like say 4, comma, uh, 21 degrees, where in this situation, this is something completely different. This is a new type of coordinate system where you have um, 4 representing here a distance. In this case, it is distance from the origin. And 21 degrees here represents an angle. This represents an angle. From the uh, from the positive x-axis. Okay. Now, of course, you know I'm just doing this as a very very brief introduction here. If you want to learn more about the polar coordinate system, I suggest you do the reading on your own. Um, but it has its advantages later on. Now, another thing about the uh, Cartesian coordinate system is that you know we can very easily extend this. And the nice part about the Cartesian coordinate system is that it extends very well into three dimensions. Notice that in this situation we have two dimensions here. We can create a third dimension by simply sticking a third number in front of it here, a third coordinate. So, for instance, here we can have a point. You know, we can have our point five comma negative one, and then we can just stick another number in front of this here and say that you know, say for instance two. This works in three dimensions now. So essentially, what happens is instead uh, instead of this flat two dimensional grid here, we're going to have a third axis. Is here. A third axis is going to be something like this. So my red pen here is going to act as the third axis. And technically, the red pen should also go through the, uh, the surface of the paper into the table here as well. So in essence, what's going on here is now you have uh, a third thing here that represents uh, up down. So for instance, in our uh, example, 5, negative 1, 2, we're at 5, negative 1 here, B. But this time, 2 means we're going to go 2 units up. 
So it's gonna, so our point B is going to be hovering in midair somewhere around here-ish, okay, where the point of my index finger is. Okay, so of course that's going to change things up here. We're not going to have quadrants where anymore. We're actually going to have octants where the entire three-dimensional space is divided into you know sort of eight mini cubes here and things like that. Of course, why stop there? You know, the idea behind this is that we created a three-dimensional thing here by sticking out a new axis from the center that was mutually perpendicular to all the other axes in general. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with us saying 5, negative 1, 2, 6, for instance. You can have a point in four-dimensional space. So whatever that looks like, you would have it in the new axis. So for instance, we had an X, we had a Y, we had a Z coming out. You would have to have a you know a fourth, sort of a W axis here. And you would have to make it such as perpendicular to all the other axes here. Now, unfortunately, at this point, we can't do this because you know that does, that's not how the space in our universe works. We don't know what that looks like here. Nevertheless, you know, it does make perfect sense here. We can go to four, five, six, and even higher dimensional quantities by simply just listing out more numbers and creating things like this. Note that in this situation here, right, with this, we we want to make sure that just like in the two-dimensional case, everything is in order here. So this is X, Y, Z, W here. And we can keep going like that. Okay?